Praise the Lord and welcome to Landmark Church. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to be in church tonight. There are a lot of other places we could be, but we're thankful that we get to be in church tonight. Praise the Lord. Let's lift him up for the opportunity to be here. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. As is customary, I would like to ask everyone to stand with me as we go to the Lord in prayer. I also want to thank those that are joining us on Facebook tonight. We welcome you to Landmark Church. So we're still rejoicing with the Moore family because of Brother Terry's healing from cancer. Can we take a moment to really rejoice? God, we thank you for that. We thank you for the healing. We thank you for the deliverance. We thank you for taking something that seemed impossible and making it whole. God, we rejoice in that today. We praise you for that today. Let's give him another hand clap. Hallelujah. We know you are a healer, God. You are an awesome God. You are great and mighty and glorious. You are victorious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We know he's a healer. You know, we've heard that. We've heard that in the Bible. But today we have evidence. God is a healer. I cannot thank him enough for that. We do have several needs that we need to take before the Lord today, but we come with faith believing that God is already doing a work in each of these needs. We want to pray for several others that are battling cancer. We have Melissa and Al, Vicki, Missy, Beverly, Lexi, Jim Phelps, Justin Haas's father. Those are several names, but if you can just remember one and begin to plead the blood of Jesus over those one of those names tonight. We're still praying for John and Susan Gieselman. They're still um, battling those, those diseases in their body. So let's keep reaching out for God to move and to continue to move in those situations. We do want to continue to pray for Brother Terry Moore as he finishes up the treatments that he started. But I don't know about you. I'm rejoicing. I've rejoiced all week long in what God has done in that situation. We're still praying for Brother David Wooden. He needs healing in his body. Carolyn needs touch um, physically and emotionally. She needs a touch. Um, Carol and Sister Barb or T or or Giza. And there we go. Believing for complete restoration in Carl's eyes. Baby Nolan, who's five months old, is in need of healing and he has cancer in his belly. Ephany, um, a miracle in an unborn child who's been diagnosed with spina bifida. Pastor David, we want to continue praying and believing for complete healing in your body. Amen. Randy J Jansen, who is Brother Lucas's brother-in-law, we brought him up on Sunday. Complete healing after a successful heart surgery. So we need to rejoice in that successful heart surgery. But we're going to continue to praise and to um, worship God for that healing, but continue praying for him as well. Gina, Sister Sue's daughter, is having neck surgery. We're going to pray and believe that um, that's going to go well. And then does anybody here have an unspoken request? You can see several people. If you would turn and look and just nod and agree with somebody that has their hand up, believing. The Bible says if two or three agree on one thing, it shall be done. So we're agreeing together tonight. Let's begin to lift these up. Let's start off with worship and praise and thanksgiving and then lift these needs to him. God, I love you, and I thank you for this day. I thank you for your mighty hand. I thank you for your promise that you've given us, every promise in the word of God, your faithfulness, uh, the promise to reach to us. Even, God, when, when we can't quite get a hold of you, you promise to reach down and meet us where we are. God, we're thankful for the stripes that you took on your back for our healing. We thank you for the deliverance and the peace that passeth all understanding that you promise us. We thank you for the joy unspeakable that you tell us we receive in you. God, we cannot praise you enough for those promises. But God, even if we don't see the fulfillment of those, you're still a good God. You're still an awesome king. You're still the only one that sits on the throne. You're still the only one that deserves every ounce of my praise. God, I understand today we were made to worship you. We were made to lift you high. So I choose today to do that, whether you answer these needs or not. I choose to praise you. I choose to lift you up. But your word does say that we need to cast our cares on you. So God, even though you're worthy despite 
what you fulfill and what you don't fulfill. Even though you're still worthy, God, I'm going to cast these needs upon you today. God, I give you every person that's battling cancer. God, these individuals, Melissa, Al, Vicky, Missy, Beverly, Lexi, Jim, and Justin Haas's father, God, I give them to you. I ask that you'll be in the center of that situation, that you'll provide for them financially, that God, you'll lift them up emotionally and you'll strengthen them spiritually. Give them complete and total wholeness in their body. God, touch John Gieselman. You see the battle in his life and his body. Bring him healing, and we rejoice in that today. We thank you for what you've already started. God, we thank you for Sister Susan and every miracle that you've performed in her life. And God, no matter what the doctors say today, we trust that you're still healing. You're doing things that we can't even see or understand. And we give you the glory for what you've started. We give you the glory for making this a cancer-free church and we stand on that in the name of Jesus. God, I want to thank you for Brother Terry Moore and the healing that you brought to his life. God, this is a true miracle. God, and we are thankful for what you've just started. God, this is the first of many, and we rejoice in it. We ask that you'll keep your hand upon him, though, that you'll continue to strengthen him. God, we thank you for the wholeness that you've already brought him, but keep angels around him. Keep his mind lifted and his spirit strengthened in Jesus' name. God touch David Wooden, bring healing to his body, strengthen him in the name of Jesus. Touch, touch Carolyn Mankey, God bring her a physical and a, a, an emotional touch today. Allow her to feel, allow them to feel your spirit wherever they are in the name of Jesus. We thank you for what you're doing. God, touch Carl and Sister Barb. I ask that you'll move in them, that you'll be at the center of them. And we ask that you'll bring complete healing to Carl's life. In Jesus' name, you see this baby Nolan. God, you see what he's battling, things that we don't understand, things that he can't, can't even communicate. But God, we know that you are a healer. We know you see every need. You know the solution to every problem. God, be in the midst of that situation. Touch that mother and that father. Give them peace of mind. And let this be an opportunity for your spirit to speak to them like never before. We thank you for what you're doing there. God, touch the situation with Ephany. You see what this individual needs. I ask that you will bring peace in that situation and healing in that situation. We stand upon the word of God. We trust in your promises, in your name. Continue to touch Pastor David. God, we lift him up to you today. God, we lift him up spiritually, emotionally, physically. God, I ask that you will bless him. Bring him complete and total healing and peace in his body. God, we claim it in the name of Jesus. We speak to the sickness and we say that it has to flee in the name of Jesus. We claim your healing, God. You see Randy Jansen, Brother Lucas's brother-in-law you see this battle and God you've been watching over the situation all along there's been a successful heart surgery and we give you the glory for that we know that you were in the room when that took place you knew how it was going to go and we believe you're going to continue to heal his body we claim it in the name of Jesus God you see Gina sister Sue's daughter you see this neck surgery that she's going into I ask that you will touch the doctor's hands that God you will be in the middle of that room and that, God, it will um, take place exactly as you've ordained it to. We trust you in that situation, and we give it all to you. Lord, you see each and every unspoken need. God, every individual that lifted up their hand. God, every individual that was brave enough to stand up, they were bold enough to stand up and say, God, I have something that I need from you tonight. And God, because of that boldness, we ask that you will continue to move in those situations, that you will touch and transform, that God, you'll remove the things that may be hindering us from moving to the next step. Help us to embrace the things we're supposed to embrace and let go of the things that you're asking us to let go of. We give you the glory for all that you're going to do. We worship you because you're a good God. And God, even if you don't, we know you're still good. 
Even if these needs go unanswered, God, we know that you are still powerful. We know you are still a healer. We know you are still a deliverer. You know, we know that you are still uh, the, the king of all kings. And we worship you for that today. Church, can we lift him up and praise him just because he's God? Just because he's good. And just because he is worthy of all the praise. We honor you today. We magnify you in our own life. We lift you up, Jesus. We bless you, Savior. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. In Jesus' name. Thank you, name. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I am thankful to serve a God who is active in our lives, who is alive and powerful, and that when we call on his name, when we just call on his name, Jesus, he moves. Whether we see it or not, he moves. He loves us so much. He cannot resist us. We serve a good God tonight, and I'm excited that I know Him. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And I'm excited to be up here with you guys tonight. Um, I have something that I want to share this evening. Brother Tad was giving me a hard time. Um, my title this evening is Set Free. And he was trying to come up with a background for that. He's like, man, you're not giving me much to, to go with. Maybe I should have given it more thought, uh, but... That's what I believe this message is tonight. I believe that if, if we will take hold of what I'm going to give you, I believe that God is going to set us free from things in our lives that currently bind us, things that we may not even be aware of. Amen? And I want to be set free from these things. This, this is for me this evening. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm not going to keep you standing long. Um, my opening scripture this evening is Psalms 51.5. And it reads, I'll wait for Brother Tad to get it on the screen. And it reads, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. I was born into sin. You guys are welcome to have a seat. You can stand if you like, but you're welcome to sit. Whether I like it or not, I was born into this world in need of redemption. From the time I entered this world, and most of the time, at least in my life, I've judged sin as simply as breaking one of the commandments or if I hurt somebody physically or emotionally. That's how I've counted sin. But things that are sin, there are more than that, actually. There are attitudes there are behaviors and the things that we believe in our mind. If sin is the thing that separates us from God, then our misguided beliefs and thoughts have to be sin because these are the things that most often hold us back from stepping into the life that God has for us. That's what I found in my life anyway. Does anyone else in this room want to step up this evening and move forward in Christ? Amen? Amen? Maybe some of you are already aware of things that you think in your mind that don't line up with what he believes about you. But I believe most of the time, the things that we think that are misguided in our lives and our thoughts, we don't often recognize them. I don't believe we're a lot of times even aware of them. I believe that we're prisoners to our thoughts. You guys ever heard the scenario about the frog in the boiling water? He doesn't know that he's, he's being cooked. I believe that's how we are a lot of times with our thoughts. So if you'll bear with me, I'm, I am going to go somewhere with this this evening. But I believe, I believe that I am here to encourage you this evening to step out of things in your mind, things that are holding you back, and move forward in Jesus Christ this evening. Amen? Amen. And I don't, want to, I don't want to pretend like I know things that you're going through things that you think, things that you deal with, but I am confident that each one of us here tonight deal with things in our minds that are not of God. We have thoughts that do not line up with Him, and I believe that if you will latch hold of this, I believe that there is freedom for each one of us personally this evening. How many of you here this evening recognize or at least believe that your, most of your struggles originate up here in your mind, between your ears? That's me for sure. That's how I know it's you, because I know that's me. Amen? We are prisoners of our own mind. Is there anyone else who's tired of being a prisoner of things in your mind that aren't of God? 
like the frog, not recognizing our situation. We have come, become prisoners to our thoughts that breed death rather than life. And I have, I've never served any time in prison. I don't know if any of you have. But the impact that prison can have on someone is much like our thoughts have on our lives. The prison system does not offer a normal environment for prisoners. The day-to-day -day living in a prison forces an inmate to adjust and adapt to unnatural settings. The term to describe this unnatural um, situation is called institutionalization, which is the process by which inmates are shaped and transformed by an institutional environment. This process occurs in someone who's been imprisoned at a very young age. This young person hasn't developed the skills required to make their own decisions or choices. They enter the prison system, which is not set up to help them with this, to develop these skills, and instead the daily prison schedule makes all the decision for them. It tells them where to go, when to go, how to go. It tells them everything that they have to do. And over time, they can't make decisions on their own. They're unable to. Since the inmate is so often that they've entered this system at a young age, it's all that they've ever known. Unfortunately, they are just incapable of making a decision, and they're left with a diminished sense of self-worth and personal value. Why am I sharing this? What's this have to do with anything? Well, I believe that because of the thoughts in our mind that we have also been institutionalized, despite the fact that you maybe have never entered the correct, a correctional facility. I say this because we can also end up with this type of mindset ourselves since we adapt in our lives to thoughts or beliefs that we have. We aren't different from these young inmates that we have been imprisoned with certain types of thoughts our entire lives. These beliefs have formed us, they have shaped us into who we are, and we don't know how to live outside of these beliefs because it's all we've ever known. These beliefs limit us as well as to where we go, when we go, and what we do when we go. These beliefs originated most of the time in us before we ever knew Christ, and with no intentional fault may have even been developed in us as children by those who have raised us. These beliefs have also left us with a diminished sense of self-worth and personal value and have left us with a mindset that we are unable to do things that God has called us to do because we just don't believe we can do it. Maybe you've been told that you're too dumb to accomplish anything or that you'll never be able to succeed at anything that you lay your hand to and you've believed it. Maybe you were told that as a kid. Or maybe you haven't heard any of this, but because of things that you saw your parents, the restrictions that they put on themselves that they lived within, that you just inherited those things and didn't feel you could go beyond what they went, went into, right? These beliefs cause insecurity, and they dictate our every move. You have become institutionalized not because you've chose this, but because you've believed lies that you maybe didn't even know you were believing. Let me ask a dumb question. Is our God institutionalized in his mind? Is his mind clouded from truth because of our past, because of our false beliefs? I don't think so. It's obviously no, but the truth is that we are most definitely limiting him in our lives when we do not open up our minds for his truth in us, to see ourselves as he sees us. And I can promise you tonight that how you see yourself is miles away from how he sees you. Amen? Amen. So how do we fix this? Because unfortunately for some of us, these mindsets are so buried in us that we, it's just become normal for us to think this way. It's all that we've ever known, and we've become like the frog, right? But we're not frogs. A frog doesn't have any hope right we have hope we are the redeemed he has bought us and he has paid a price for us we have hope we don't have to stay in this condition amen not if we don't want to amen jeremiah 38 says for it shall come to pass in that day 
saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and I will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. Do you believe that God expects us to wait for another day to be set free? Do you believe that today could be that day? Do you want to be set free today? Amen. Well, if you want to be set free today, I can, I can promise you that your desire to be free from your thoughts in your mind are not greater than his desire for you to be free from those thoughts. Amen. If you want your mind to be renewed, I'm here to tell you that God wants to begin a process in you to set you free from things in your mind that you don't even know hold you captive this evening. Amen. Philippians 4. 8 and 9 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. I've always interpreted this scripture not to things on, on things that are not of God, that are laced with sin, maybe perverse things, that we want to stay away from those things, and we do. That it, that it, that it, the scripture is saying that. But I believe that it's saying more than that. I think it's saying more than thinking upon things we've heard on the radio or things we've seen on TV. I believe that this scripture tells us that the things that we have continued to believe from our past that have held us back, these are the things that we shouldn't be thinking upon. Our incarcerated thoughts are in no way honest, just, pure, or lovely. These are not those things. These are not the things that we should be thinking upon. In fact, in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to obedience of Christ. Amen. The word cast down in this scripture can be translated with the use of force. So we should begin to create or retrain our thoughts by taking our thoughts captive and by use of force, demolishing these beliefs that rise up and stand our way that keep us from stepping into the call of Jesus on our lives. Warfare, right? Actively pursue freedom. I'm not talking about something that we can just simply just sit back and ask God through prayer to just, just, take, it, just take it away. I'm talking about something that involves us applying ourselves and taking action by use of force to gain control over each of our minds. I'm talking about going to the place where his thoughts of you become your thoughts of you. And the result will be as his ways for you will become your ways. Amen? I'm not again trying to pretend to know all the answers for your life because I don't know the answers for my life. Amen? I, I need help. I need control over my own mind. But we all have a story that we could share that's caused us to live in the thoughts that we live in. And I don't, I don't know how to fix that past. I don't know how to fix my past, but what I can tell you is when you have thoughts that don't line up with the Word of God, we need to rebuke those thoughts. We need to reject them and cast them away. We must take action by use of force. We don't have to stand captive to thoughts that have been sowed in our lives by an enemy whose goal is to destroy us. We have to stop believing these lies, and we have to step into the life that God has intended for us. So where do we begin with this? The first thing is that we need to replace these lies with what? Truth. Not just any old truth, but God's truth about you. Until we begin to fill our minds with the truth about 
what he sees in his eyes, what our creator sees about us, we won't be able to recognize the lies in our minds that we hear. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? In the Old Testament, God had a temple for his people, right? But in the New Testament, God has a people for his temple. What I'm saying is that you are his temple. That's not a little thing. That's a really big thing. Because we are redeemed by the work of Jesus on the cross, God's Spirit can now take up residence in us. And if God places enough value on us that he wants to live in us, that tells me that we're pretty precious to him, that we are valuable in his eyes, and if we will look at the temple, I believe that we can begin to see a true picture of ourselves. So if we're the temple of God, what do we know about the temple? I'm not an expert on the temple, but I'll share what I what I believe God has for you about this tonight. The temple in the Old Testament was given over completely to God's sacred purpose, and it was considered holy. Now that we are the temple under the new covenant, the same purpose applies for us. We are to be given over. Our whole life purposed for his purpose and reserved for him alone. We are to be God-possessed and indwelled by him. Whatever we yield to God, he accepts, he cleanses, he fills, and then he uses for his glory and for his honor. Living this life takes everything off of you and puts all the responsibility on him, except for one thing, yielding to him. Amen? By letting him take full control of us and possess us, that is our only responsibility. To have a desire to be his and to be willing to give ourselves to him. That is our struggle, but that is our purpose. Allowing him to take possession of us as being his temple results in, in my, I believe that if we will allow him to do this, it will result in complete and absolute victory in our lives all the time, all the time. It makes the lies in our head powerless. The lies can no longer limit you because regardless of what you've been told or what you've lived in your past, you're no longer acting in your abilities. If we are allowing ourselves to be possessed by him, it's his abilities. It's all on him, right? And let me remind you that the God I serve is not limited in his abilities by anything about me. If I will allow him to be almighty over me, There's nothing that's not possible. Amen? To now say that you can't do something that you are called to because of what you have believed about yourself doesn't imply that you're incapable, but instead it says that God isn't capable of accomplishing his abilities through you in the things that he has called you to. And I'm not saying... That being the temple of God is easy because becoming his temple means instead of sacrificing animals, that we are now to sacrifice ourselves to him. And there's nothing more difficult, in my opinion, than surrendering my complete will over to him. Although the sacrifice of our will to him should be driven out of love for him, the truth is no one benefits more than we do when we surrender our will to him. Amen? 2 Corinthians 6.16 says, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. I want to be a little bit more specific here about the temple of God. Since he dwells in us, I want to talk about the inner sanctuary of the temple. The inner sanctuary is the place that God specifically dwelt in his temple. The inner sanctuary sorry, the inner sanctuary is the most sacred area in the temple and the place of worship, and it was called the Holy of Holies. It's a place that wasn't to be entered into lightly. 
In fact, it was such a special place that only the high priest could enter into the Holy of Holies once a year on the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement was a yearly feast instituted by God to completely pay the penalty for all the sins of the people of Israel. The people of Israel's sins were paid for once a year in the inner sanctuary, which was overlaid with gold. Practically, the entire inner sanctuary was lined with gold, but it wasn't just any gold. It was pure gold. Gold in the Bible represents spiritual purity, and seven different Hebrew words are used in the Old Testament to describe gold, with seven being the number that represents perfection. Amen? The revelation that I believe that I have for you this evening is that you are God's holy place. You are his holy of holies, and you, like the inner sanctuary, do not have to be pure and perfect gold. You just have to be lined or covered with this gold. Amen? Covered in him, in his perfection, not having to be perfect yourself. And when you accept his perfection, he looks on you and sees his righteousness, his goodness. Every perfect thing about our God is what he sees in you when you allow him to line you with him. If you being his inner sanctuary, his holy holies, I can tell you he isn't looking to enter into you once a year. God is wanting to take up permanent residence, making every day a constant day of atonement for each one of us. You don't have to focus on your failures of your past and limit yourself from going forward. You don't have to allow your weaknesses to keep you from moving forward in the ministry that he has called you to. And each one of you here this evening, God has ministry for each one of us. And today is the day that we can step out and begin to wear this garment of righteousness with confidence, knowing that it is ours. Amen. You no longer have to listen to the lies in your life. Amen. God doesn't want us fighting. He doesn't want us struggling. He doesn't want us believing these lies that keep you from moving forward and experiencing his peace. You are his sanctuary, and he is constantly washing away your sin. He is constantly washing away your sin. If you have allowed him to enter into you as the place of this holy of holies, every day is a day of atonement for you. He is constantly washing away every imperfection. You don't have to focus on them. They don't exist if you're lined with him. Amen? Amen. That, ex- that gets me excited. It does. We don't have to be psychologically examined. We don't have to figure out everything that's wrong with us to recognize these, this misguided beliefs that we have in our lives that's imprisoned us. We don't have to look at the lies. You know what we have to do? We have to look at truth. He is our righteousness, and we can wear him with confidence. It isn't about us. It isn't about how good we are. It isn't about how bad we are. And it certainly isn't about what we've been told that we are. It is about him, and it's about him alone, nothing else. It's all about Jesus. It's about what he has done, and it's about what he is doing, and us getting out of the way and letting him do it. I want to share a few sentences out of the Message Bible in 1 Corinthians 12. 4 through 11. It says, God's various gifts are handed out everywhere, but they all originate in God's Spirit. God's various ministries are carried out everywhere, but they all originate in God's Spirit. God's various expressions of power are in action everywhere, but God Himself is behind it all. Each person is giving something to do, something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets in on it. It says everyone benefits. All kinds of things are handed out by the Spirit and to all kinds of people. Your gifts and ministry are from His Spirit that dwells in you. You are His temple, and He is behind everything. If we'll let him. He gets all the glory. He gets all the credit for anything good in you. 
because He is our complete perfection. Amen. 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 And God isn't looking for all the attention because He's an attention hog or some kind of, you know, glory hound. He does it because He loves us and He wants to remove this burden that's on us, this stress that we have on our lives to be perfect and to perform. He wants you to trust Him for righteousness, and He wants you to thank Him for the good works that He does through you. He wants to use you. He wants to use If you knew anything about me, it's amazing that God wants to use me. Amen? Amen. It's, no, it's no small thing to be the temple of God. Amen. His thoughts for you are higher than, than I know or that I understand how to express to anyone tonight. But I believe that if you'll begin to accept who you are in Him, remind yourself who you are in Him, and begin to walk in who you are in Him, then I believe that you'll begin to recognize those thoughts in your minds that have held you captive that are not of God. I believe God wants to set us free from things that we don't even recognize in our lives. And if we will let him, he wants to do things in us that allows us to step into a freedom that allows him to do things that we read about in the Bible in the early church that we haven't seen. I believe these, these are the things that hold us back. And it starts with accepting his righteousness and becoming his dwelling place. I want to finish tonight by saying I believe God wants to do things in each of us and project us into places that we didn't even know existed. There isn't one person here tonight who isn't capable of stepping into what I've shared this evening. If you'll pursue truth and freedom in your life, in your mind, I believe that this freedom is yours. That's why I say set free, because I believe we have been set free. We just have to step into this. We have to engage ourselves into him. Amen. In short, you are pure because he is pure. You've been made whole because he is whole. Is there anything lacking in him? No. So we are whole. Your righteousness comes from his righteousness. You are righteous because he is righteous. You're not limited in your life to serving Christ because of your abilities. Because of your abilities. <laughs> You've been set free. And if you if you're want to step into this, I believe if you will pursue him, that God has something for each one of us. Amen? Amen? I don't see, when I look across this room, I don't see what God sees. But I can tell you that I see more in each one of you sitting here tonight than what you see. Because I don't believe the lies about you that you believe. I believe the lies about me, maybe. Now, there's no maybe there, but I do. But each one of you have more potential in Jesus Christ than what you have an inkling of. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I hope each one of you are able to step away from this this evening and begin to believe truth upon your lives. And when God calls you into things, if God calls you to go talk to somebody, that you don't necessarily respond, God, I'm just not good with words. I don't know how to approach him. I don't know what to say. Just go talk to him. God is a door-opening God. My greatest experiences witnessing to people have just been stepping out in faith and saying, hey, how are you doing? And the next thing I know, sometimes they bring up Jesus. That's who he is. If we will just step out into the things that he prompts us to do and trust him for it and try, quit trying to predict the outcome, quit trying to limit him and our limitations, I believe that God is going to begin to start doing amazing through, things through everyone here at Landmark Church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you for listening to me tonight. Amen. I hope each one of you got something this evening. Before we close in prayer this evening, I want to share some announcements. Um, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. is Men's Overcomers Bible Study. So if you're a man, please be here. This Saturday, June 12th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. is the Landmark Ladies Tea Party. More than a sip of Jesus, is that right? Amen. I think there's some ladies who are excited about that. 
This Sunday, also, a fall, immediately following service, there will be a landmark ministry leaders meeting. So if you're the, um, a ministry leader here at Landmark, immediately following service, there is a meeting. We'll be talking, I, I believe, about our one-year plans and some of that. So please, hang, please plan to hang around after service if that applies to you. And Tuesday, June 15th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. is the Rise and Shine Breakfast for children ages 4 through 11. If you need any additional information, you can reach out to Sister Andy or Sister Jonna for those details. But I believe that I'm right that the ages are 4 to 11, right? Okay. And then on June 27th from 5 to 7 is the Legacy Youth. Amen. That's Sunday evening, and I just confirmed it's ages 12 through high school. So if you're 12 years old or older, up through, if you're still in high school, correct? Please attend. These guys have been having a blast from what I understand. I'm not allowed to be there, but from everything I've told, they're having a, a really a good time. So there's one more announcement, and this is, this is kind of an exciting one. Um, the food box giveaway that we've been doing, um, some of that's changed with some of the grants and stuff running out. I believe it's now just going to be a partnership between Good Sam and the United Way. They are going to continue to do this. I don't think it's going to be as frequent in the community as it has been. But under this new arrangement, Landmark Church has been determined as the sole location for these giveaways. We... So that's, that's kind of a big deal. That's, that, to me, that speaks volumes about the members of this church because when we've had that, we always have workers. We always have people who show up who are willing to help, who want to help this community. And that, that's a reflection of you guys, that we were chosen to be, to be that hub. Um, but so anyways, that's going to be happening every month on the third Saturday of each month. So that will begin on um, Saturday the 19th. So I think that's, is that not this Saturday, I believe, but the following Saturday, the 19th. I think this is the 12th. So, so a week from this Saturday, and um, Pastor Michael, I think, will probably be able to give us times. But anyway, mark that on your calendars. And don't forget, this Sunday at 10 a.m., we'll have our service. Come expecting to hear from God. We've been having some... God's been moving in this place. God's been, speak, God's been speaking to me. Uh, he's been speaking to you guys. I see it. And it's just been incredible. Come with an expectation. Be in prayer this week about service. And let's just see what God has. Amen? Before we dismiss, let's stand and pray. Lord, I want to thank you for who you are. Lord, I just pray that tonight that you would begin a work in each one of us, Lord. That you would begin, to set, begin setting us free from things in our lives, in our minds. That you would begin to do a work, Lord, a greater work than you have already started. You have already started a work in Landmark Church that we see, Lord, and we believe that you are not done, Lord, that you are going to project this, this assembly into places, Lord, that we cannot fathom, Lord, that we can't imagine. Lord, when we dream, we can't dream the things, Lord, that you want to do. And Lord, we just want to turn ourselves loose, open ourselves up to you, and ask that you would have your way with this church individually and corporately in this body, Lord. As we leave this place tonight, Lord, we pray that tomorrow that you would begin to open doors, that you would use us, Lord, in other people's lives to share, Lord, a love that has set us free from things, Lord, that other people need set free, Lord. You have given us freely, Lord. Help us to give freely. Lord, we just pray that you would keep everyone safe as they travel home, Lord, and we just want to give you thanks again for all that you're doing, Lord, that you are in this assembly that you are working, Lord, and that you are visible in our lives. Lord, we praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Facebook, we'll see you Sunday. We love you.